dance floor as you can hear what he has to say. He's with his dance floor, he thinks the world is all over. What up, Net fans? Nets boy here. Bring your latest in your not-so-looking-good-right-now Brooklyn Nets news. Wow. How crazy is it how a series can just switch like that? After game two, we were all saying, including Nets boy himself, oh, this series is over, the Nets are going to sweep, or they're going to win in five, they, they, they look dominant, the Bucks have no answer, all this stuff. Well... Now the series is tied 2-2, and we're going to address Game 3 and Game 4 as the Nets don't look like they're in good shape. And obviously we're going to talk about the Kyrie Irving injury and what this means for this Nets for the next games moving forward. And will James Harden come back? And, 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 and just, just what are the Nets going to do being down two superstars? So a lot to talk about in this episode, a lot to discuss. So let's dive right in. So let's start off with Game 3. Um... I had said in my last Netflix episode that similar to what happened with Game 3 against the Celtics, I kind of felt if the Bucks were going to win a game, it was going to be Game 3. And it kind of went exactly the way I thought it would. Bucks came out as the aggressive team, the more desperate team, built a 19-point lead against the Nets, only 11 points scored in the first quarter for the Nets. No one could make a damn shot. You know, Kyrie, Katie, you know, Joe Harris... Blake Griffin, no one could shoot the ball. And yeah, the Bucks were up by 19 points. But the Nets battled right back and ended up taking the lead at one point, I believe, by the third quarter. And then from that point on, it was a back-and-forth slugfest. And when I say slugfest, I mean it was a slugfest. Game three was like an old-fashioned 90s basketball game. Just loads of defense, a lot of physicality, and just a lot of back and forth between the superstars, right? Kevin Durant versus Giannis, you know, uh, uh, Kyrie Irving versus Chris Middleton. And the Nets just couldn't prevail as poor decisions down the stretch by Bruce Brown and, and bad execution caused the Nets to just, ah, just fail. And, and you know, if you were going to tell me that the Nets were only going to score 83 points and they would have only lost by three, I would have thought you were nuts. But that's what happened. And, I mean, look, the reality is with Game 3 is that it became one of those games where Kevin Durant wanted to try to take over. You know, the fans are edging, you know, edging them on, you know, you know chanting, you know, you know, FKD and this and that, and KD, and KD sucks and all those things. And he wanted to shut the fans up. And, you know, that's a good thing and bad thing about about KD like Kevin Durant wants to be the guy he wants to be the superstar because he is that guy but sometimes you just gotta not play into the hands of what the fans are trying to do they gotta bait it into KD taking some really tough shots and he shot under 40 percent in that game he was he was terrible he was just jacking up bad shot after bad shot and it just wasn't going in and in that fourth quarter that's all he just kept doing and, and Kyrie Irving didn't even take a shot in the fourth quarter. How does Kyrie Irving not take a shot in the fourth quarter? And then down the stretch, with the, ch the chance for the Nets to, to put the, the Bucks away, Bruce Brown, who had a very good game up to this point, just said, I'm a superstar too. I'm just going to go to the hole and, 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 and go up against Brooke Lopez, who oh, had five blocks to that point and has been just dominating and challenges the seven-footer and puts up the worst-looking floating layup I've ever seen and wasn't even close. And I'm just thinking to myself, what the hell are you doing, Bruce? Like, like everyone, you know, was bashing Bruce Brown. And I don't want to bash him too much. Yes, that was a very dumb shot by Bruce Brown. But the reality is, without Bruce Brown, the Nets would not have gotten back in that game because he played really well, especially in that second, third quarter, to help the Nets, you know, come back from being down 19 so I didn't want to like you know crap on Bruce Brown that much but I don't know what he was thinking and I know they later talked about it in the post game that it, you know there was a play that was written up and the play went south you know and things just weren't and, and weren't looking good and, and Bruce Brown just kind of panicked you know he looked at the shot clock there was like seven eight seconds left and instead of trying to find Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving for them to create their shot he thought maybe he could take it to the hole maybe draw a foul 
But I mean, come on, man. Brooke Lopez in the, throughout this entire series so far has been a huge factor in the in the post. You're not going to win that matchup. Like Brooke Lopez is one of the best interior defenders there are. So I don't know what he was thinking, but I actually look back at the previous play when Joe Harris missed that wide open two. Like, or was that the play after? I don't remember exactly the sequence of plays. It was one of the play before play after where it was a loose ball. The ball's bounce around. Joe Harris gets the ball and shoots a wide open mid-range, what, like 17-foot jump shot and misses. And you know, I knew that once that shot missed, this game was over. Drew Holiday dribbles the ball slowly. I don't know if the Nets thought that they were going to call a timeout. Nothing happens. Drew Holiday blows past Joe Harris, not even an attempt to stop him. And then Bruce Brown comes and has this kind of like ole defense, doesn't even put a hand up, and Kevin Durant doesn't rotate. And yes, Drew Holiday had a little spin move, but that was one of the easiest game-winning shots I've ever seen anyone ever take. I don't know what they were doing. And how do you not at least foul him if you're Bruce Brown? Like, you're, 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 you're up by one, right? Oh, no, no, you're not up by one. You're down by one. You just, you, you can't afford to give them an easy layup like that. Or are they up by one? I don't remember exactly what it was, but you can't give them that easy shot. And sure enough, he makes the shot. Yeah, they were up by one, the Bucks were, and that's why they were up by three. And then with 2.1 seconds to go, we all knew Kevin Durant was going to get the ball. We all knew it. We, we knew it. The Bucks knew it. Everyone knew it. All... Over 2 million people who were watching the show, the, the, the game, knew Kevin Durant was going to shoot that ball. And look, I get it. Kevin Durant, superstar player, best player on the Nets. But if there's ever a moment for Steve Nash to say, maybe we should try to use Kevin Durant as a decoy with 2.1 seconds left, this is the time to do it. I mean... You saw what happened. Kevin Durant catches the ball, and immediately three bucks just swarm Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant just kind of takes a dribble and takes this ridiculous shot that somehow almost went in. But there was no doubt in my mind it wasn't going to go in. And it misses off the back rim, and the Nets lose. And I'm just thinking to myself, you've got Kyrie Irving and Joe Harris out there. Both, and I, granted, Joe Harris was one for 11 at that time, and Kyrie Irving didn't even take a shot in the fourth quarter. But those two guys were both wide open because the defense collapsed on Durant. And look, 2.1 seconds, not a lot of time, but it's definitely enough time to get the ball, make one pass, and for them to shoot. And look, I actually have a diagram here. I don't know if we can see it. Clearly, I don't, it's, it's kind of hard to see. I, you can't see it that well. I don't know. I didn't think you really would really be able to see it. But it's the play I would have written up if I was, you know, Steve Nash. Basically what it was is the same exact play that Steve Nash ran, except when Durant catches the ball, he makes a decision right then and there. If they collapse, he passes. If they stag off and let him get some separation, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, you take the shot. And sure enough, they collapsed. All Durant needed to do was pass the ball. And what I would have done is I would have had Joe Harris or Kyrie Irving come off a back screen on the other side of the court with the diagram. I wish you could see it. It's hard to see. Come around the side <laughs> and come off a screen and catch it at the top of the key for an open three. By that point, that might be 0.5 seconds, but you'll be in rhythm, catch, shoot, buzzer goes off, chance for an open shot instead of this ridiculous fadeaway contested three by Kevin Durant. But for some weird reason, you know, Steve Nash has never been good when it came to the X's and O's. We've always noticed that. He's just like, hey, I'll just give it to Durant and see what happens. So game three was just a disaster. And I'm thinking to myself, well, the Nets should be able to bounce back in game four, right? Like Durant's not going to shoot under 40% again. Kyrie is not going to go scoreless in the fourth quarter. Joe Harris isn't going to go one for 11. Like, that's not going to happen. And it didn't happen. But what did happen was a devastating injury to Kyrie Irving. When Kyrie went down in game four, it was a four-point game. And look, 
I'm not going to start here and start saying, oh, it was a dirty play by Giannis. I personally don't think it was intentional. I mean, I think in the heat of the moment, you're not really processing, you know, oh, I'm going to intentionally stick my leg out so Kyrie Irving can land on it and twist his ankle. I really don't think Giannis was doing that on, did that on purpose. But that absolutely was a foul, and it wasn't called. Heck, a lot of calls did not go the Nets' way in both game three and four, which kind of shocked me. It's like the refs let the Bucks play really, really physical with the Nets, and then when the Nets tried to play physical with the Bucks, it was a foul. Like, and I'm not one to always blame the refs, though I do like to sometimes, but I kind of felt that way, at least once the series moved to Milwaukee, that the refs were really kind of allowing the physicality for the Bucks, but not the Nets. But that's just an opinion of mine. So that should have been a foul because Kyrie should have been able to land and, and, and Giannis didn't give him a landing spot. But when Kyrie went down, I knew this game was over. I knew game four was going to the Bucks because Kyrie is such a critical per player on this Nets team, especially without James Harden. He, with Kevin Durant, is enough for the, to beat any team. But when there's only one superstar out there, in this case, Kevin Durant, the Nets team become very easy to guard. And it's, we saw it. What did the Bucks do? Kyrie goes down, ankle sprain, you know, who knows how long he's going to be out for. No one really knows. Hopefully not too long, but that was a bad, that was, that, it looked bad. It, it, it really did. So that's not good. And what we saw it happen. The defense just focused on Kevin Durant. Just went right at KD. And I remember when Kyrie went out, I just said to myself, KD, please, please don't try to take over this game. I know it's in your mindset that you got to be the guy now without Kyrie, that you're going to have to score 50 points to win this game. But don't do it. Trust your teammates. Plus, trust, you know, Bruce Brown, Blake Griffin, Joe Harris, Jeff Green, who came back from this game. Trust these guys. Don't try to take over this game. And, of course, what did Kevin Durant do? Try to take over the game. And, my God, was it ugly. My God, was it ugly. Like, Durant just started jacking up terrible shots. They're triple teaming the guy. He's trying to dribble through him like he's Kyrie Irving. He's losing the ball. He's hitting the side of the backboard. He's turning the ball over. He's jacking up un unbelievably tough shots. He's getting blocked. He was just doing too much. You were doing too much, bro. You know, and, and it's just like, I get it. You're a superstar. You're one of the best players in the game. But even the best players in the game cannot win a game by themselves. I don't care how great you are. Look at Michael Jordan. When did Michael Jordan start winning? When he started trusting his teammates, passing to John Paxton for a game-winning shot, for to Steve Kerr with a game-winning shot. Heck, there was a game against the Knicks, so I don't think it was a playoff game. He passed the ball to Bill Winnington. Who the Bill Winnington with a game-winning shot against the Knicks before? Because Michael Jordan knew, hey, I don't always got to score. Yes, Jordan had tons of game-winning shots and big clutch plays. That's how great he was. But sometimes you got to trust your team. And I don't know what Durant was doing. He just like, it's got to be me. It's got to be me. KD, it's KD time. Kyrie's out. No James Harden. It's up to me. And my God, it was just a disaster. And next thing you know, the Bucks went on a run. They were up by 15, 16 points. Nets could never battle back. And yet, Kevin Durant. Durant versus team. Here I go. Oh, between the legs. Oh, I lose the ball. Or, oh, triple team. Oh, I'm going to shoot a terrible shot. That's all he was doing. And it was so frustrating. So frustrating to see that type of offense. You're not going to win with this hero ball crap. Hero ball makes you lose games. Okay? And we see it all the time in the NBA. These superstars thinking that they're the greatest thing in the world. Which, I get it. They're a superstar. That's the point. That's part of the title, Superstar. And yes, we have seen moments when they've taken over games and won games single-handedly. They have that ability. But when you're playing a team like the Bucks, who is a very talented team and a very good defensive team, your hero ball will make you lose. You've got to pass the ball. Now, what a surprise. Game, game three, how many assists did the Nets have? They had 15. Of course, the Bucks had only 12, and the Bucks still won. But once again, I've said this before, the key for the Nets is at least 25 or more assists 
for them to have a, to be able to win. And when Kyrie went out, that 100% stuck true. But the Nets only had 20 assists, especially down the stretch before, you know, you know, Steve Nash pulled everybody, you know, because the game was over in the fourth quarter. At that point, the Nets only had like 14 assists because they passed the ball more once it was in garbage town. Garbage town? Garbage time. It was garbage town. But garbage time. Like, you got to pass the ball. You can't go one on three, Katie. You're not going to succeed, especially when the three defenders are Giannis, P.J. Tucker, and Drew Holiday or Brooke Lopez. And, like, P.J. Tucker has single-handedly been handcuffing Kevin Durant these last two games. Kudos to him. And honestly, this is why the Bucks traded for P.J. Tucker. This is what this guy does. He's a great defensive player. And it's funny because Giannis is the reigning defensive player of the year last year. You know, um, Rudy Gobert won it this year. But I think Giannis won it the year before. Yet Giannis is barely even guarding KD. It's P.J. Tucker. But it's working. So what do you do if you're KD? Trust your teammates and pass the freaking ball. But nope. I freaking hate hero ball. It's why I said the Nets need 25 assists because it's the only way to prevent this hero ball. This, you know, the classic, I say it every time, your turn, my turn, his turn, crap. Well, in this case, it's just KD, my turn, 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 three on one. I'm going to take it to the whole bar. And now, series is tied, going back to Brooklyn, but no Kyrie Irving for sure. And probably no, no James Harden. I don't really believe James Harden's coming back in the series. I know Steve Nash hasn't said yes or no yet, but I don't think he is. And I think at this point, look, the Nets do have home court advantage, but it's a best of three series. It's a coin flip at this point. It can go either way. I don't want to say that the Bucks have the advantage. I know a lot of people say that because the Nets will be home two of the next three games. And we have seen players like Joe Harris, Blake Griffin, Jeff Green, Bruce Brown step up when needed to. Mike James, like we've seen him have good games throughout this entire year. We've seen this from the Nets, players picking it up and stepping up. So I don't want to say the Nets are done, but it is a legit toss up. I think it could go either way. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks win the next two games. I wouldn't be surprised if the Nets win the next two games. I wouldn't be surprised if they split and we go into a game seven. Everything is on the table at this point, but it's just it's just crazy to think that just like four or five days ago, we were all sitting here saying the series is over. But one devastating injury just completely changed that. And I'm going to be honest, I do believe that if Kyrie didn't get hurt, the Nets were going to win this game, was going to win game four. Because the Nets were building the confidence at that point. They were Remember, the Nets were down by, I believe, 10 points at that point, and then they were building right back. And then they cut it to four. And then the Bucks went on a ridiculous run and took a big lead. Again, you know, I mean, then the Nets went on a run and they took a lead and then the Bucks came back. It was all this stuff. But I really do believe that without Kyrie Irving, with, if, with ah, what the hell am I saying? With Kyrie Irving, the Nets would win game four because the Bucks would not have been able to just go after KD the way they did because they would have to respect Kyrie. But KD's got to make better plays and smarter plays. So I do believe that this injury pretty much swung this series. And I will say it's a, it's a coin toss, but I think if you were going to say who has the advantage, I think it really is the Bucks at this point. But I think it happened. And it's just frustrating to see and very disappointing to see. So there you have it. Got to move the ball, Nets. It's the only way you're going to be able to win. Play through KD in game five. Play through them. Give them the ball. Force feed them. But KD, make the right play. If they're triple teaming, you pass. All right. Let me know what you guys think about everything. About, you know, if you agree with me with KD, he needs to start passing the ball more. If you, you know, the Kyrie injury, how devastating it is. If you thought it was a dirty play or not, by honest, what this means now moving forward. You know, my next next play episode will probably be after Game Six, and let's just hope that it's either, you know. Hey, the Nets won the series. We'll, you know, we're going to wrap this up and talk about the finals, conference finals, or at least, hey, the series is going to the seventh game. We got to anal- analyze it. Hopefully, it is not my. This series is over. Let's do a Nets boy wrap up because I really wasn't expecting a Nets boy wrap up. Uh, you know, season, season wrap up so early in the playoffs, but it could happen. You know, 
if the Nets can't get their crap together, especially with the Kyrie or injury. So we'll see what happens. So game six, after game six, will be a big Nets boy. Who knows what it's going to be about, but keep your eyes open for it. Let me know what you guys think. Until this is next, until, ah, until next time. This is Nets boy crossing, crossing his damn fingers and signing off. When the